Hello everybody, I am Lucas from Lucerts and today we are taking a look at sentry guns in Minecraft. These are automatic turrets that can shoot down your opponents on the opposing team on some kind of multiplayer server um, or whatnot. Now currently this isn't multiplayer ready because I'm using at p commands but this is kind of a work in progress sort of thing. Here are the two turrets, this is the red and blue versions. You can make green ones, yellow ones, whatever colour ones for your two opposing teams, but I thought red and blue are a common team colour, so I thought I'd do mine in those colours. Um, so, um, we should probably get started on how to summon these in. Also, um, I probably said this at the start of the video in an annotation, but you shouldn't be watching this if you have epilepsy, because Minecraft and graphics don't mix well right now. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, so I'm going to destroy those two sentries and show you how they are going to be made. Oh, a snowball. Um, you can probably tell by what I just killed, but um, I have these little pathways set up so I can show you step by step, quite literally, how these are set up. And you'd usually have these on like a repeater setup to trigger these in this order, but I kind of wanted to show you each step of the way. So, first of all, we're going to step on this pressure plate. Oh, this one will be activated first, these two command blocks. And this is to summon in our red sentry, as you can see. Um, here we have a summon armor stand um, right above this command block going to put show arms to one no gravity to one and we're going to give it a specific pose these are parameters i use for the pose command um i'll put the pose section of this um in the description just that kind of that bit there um i'll put that in the description if you want to use these exact parameters you can kind of fiddle around with the arms a bit to make it look more stand like i guess but um, we're only using this kind of top half that you can see right above my toolbar there um, as kind of the stand area to hold the sentry up. Here we also have an invisible armor stand, um, which is very simple to summon in. You can probably type that out yourself. We're just using no gravity to one and invisible to one also. Next, we're going to step on this pressure plate, and that's going to set that armor stand's head to a red block. Um, so this here is just replacing an item at the entity of armor stand C equals one. We're going to do slot dot armor dot head. Um, Minecraft stained hard and clear. Um, we're going to have a quantity of one and the number fourteen. You can have any quantity there really, but um, we need number fourteen for it to be red. Um, you can change this out for anything else. If I just show you green five or thirteen, we have um, orange here, which is one. Yellow is four. I know that. Um, black is fifteen. Um, so. You just kind of pick whichever number which corresponds to whichever kind of clear. If you want to find out the number of your specific clear, I think it's F3H, I believe. Yes, it is F3H. If you hold down F3 and click the H key, then it'll come up underneath the item. Oh, there's the flashing. Um, with the kind of ID of it. So if I scroll down to the clear here, as you can see, it kind of has a number coming after it, which... Um, and the slash on the end, and then it has a number after that. That final number in that sequence is the number you should put at the end of here. I have 14. On that one, I have 11. Um, then we are going to summon in a snow golem and give it slowness and invisibility. So I'll show you that here. So I've just summoned in the snow golem and given it slowness with this one. I want to do that as quickly as possible so it won't move around. This is going to be the bare bones of our sentry. Um, these final three um, command blocks here are going to set scoreboard values for all of these entities um, just by using closest equals one commands. Um, so you would have to have this one quite far away from that one so they don't get confused. I've just set these out at a distance to where I can make this one, put it somewhere else, and then make that one. Um, but obviously on a server you'd have these at like the ends of each team's base so they wouldn't be colliding with each other. Um, so now we are going to step on here. This is going to give it... Um, invisibility, I'm sure you all know how to summon a snow golem and to affect an entity. This is affect at E type equals snowman. We're going to put closest equals one, so we're not affecting all of the snow golems. Um, slowness, and then we have this large integers here. These are the highest you can set those two numbers to. And I have trung in so particle effects aren't flying out of them. Same thing here, apart from I've typed invisibility, and here we're also going to give him a scoreboard value. So I'm going to go through the scoreboard values we actually have here. So I'm going to go slash scoreboard please set I'm going to type me the reason I'm doing this is so that I can kind of tab through them ignore the wraith though 
We have, first of all, we have red. That's just testing if you're on red team. Um, then we have red sentry, which is um, checking all of the entities um, which are involved in making up the red sentry. We have blue sentry. I spelled blue like that because I kind of felt OCD about making them the same word length. I don't know why. I kind of feel a bit dumb for doing that now, though. Um, which is just doing the same as the red sentry, apart from for team blue. And then we have blue, which is just seeing if you're on blue team. Um, the Earth Active is also another one you can ignore. But we're going to, we're going to, we're going to type scoreboard players set at E type snowman, close to equals 1. Um, you can spe specify the snowman by giving it a name. Um, I just did this because it's convenient for my uses. Um, and then we're going to have, we're just going to set its red sentry value to 1. Um, and then we're going to step on these two. That's going to make up the sentry right here, as you can see. That's going to do the same thing for the arm stand over there. Which is the exact same command, however, you have armor stand typed in there instead of um, snug on. And this is the exact same command as that one, however, we are setting that red sentry value to 2. And I'll tell you why all that is right over here, and that is because of these um, 6 command blocks here, one for each team. So that's 3 per sentry. Um, and this is completely mirrored on each side, apart from on this side we're using the red and red sentry scoreboards, and on this side we're using the blue and blue sentry scoreboards. So they're exactly the same on each side. Um, just flip the scoreboard names around um so oh, my notes are going off so i don't forget what i meant to say i do that a lot but um anyway let's actually check out these scoreboards i'll show you the red sentries one because we made the red sentry what we are doing is we are going to teleport all entities which are type armor stand with a score of red sentry of at least one and then i have a little bit on the end of here which you don't have to worry about for now this is for when i upgrade it to kind of a stage two sentry where you can like throw down some iron or diamonds on it and it would kind of upgrade to like a stage two of the sentry and it'd like shoot faster and have like mini guns stuck to the top of it and stuff. It'd be pretty cool. And they would use the value of four. So I have score red sentry four here. You don't have to have this bit in um you can just stop right here if you're making the first stage sentry for now. Then we have um at E type snowman, score with a red sentry of at least one and it's going to teleport to the closest just in case there are two um, snowmen with red sentry scores, even though there's not supposed to be um, because I kind of limited these to have one per team so I thought having more than one per team would be a little bit crazy once it gets into like the stage three or four let's say it could, it could even go that high I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm planning to go with the different stages of sentry um, but this is just teleporting um, all armor stands with a score of at least one to the snow goal. That's what it's doing first of all. Then it is going to teleport all of those. That's the exact same command. However, this time instead of selling it to the snow goal, we're going to teleport it um, minus 0 0.5 blocks downwards. And we're only doing this to ones with a score of at least two this time. So that's why we give that one over here a score of two and that one a score of one. Because we need this one to be slightly lower in the ground than that one. Um, and then we have the same thing over here, apart from this is all sentries um, with a score of 1. We're going to teleport those armor stands um, down 0.9 blocks. So that's just going to teleport both that bottom armor stand and that red one with the red block on its head down by 0.9 blocks. So that was being pushed down an extra 0.5, which seemed a little confusing at first. But don't worry, it's, it's kind of easy um, once you kind of... Once, once you've fiddled around with it, you kind of get how it works. So I'll probably put this up for download at some point when I've finished it. You can see I'm still working on it over there, but um, that's for like the stage 2 and things. So now we're going to move on to the sentry items. I'll show you how to make the blue sentry in a minute. Um, that's exactly the same process. But here we would um, we would have an auto crafter if you haven't seen my auto crafter video. Um, I like call them auto crafters. They're really custom crafters where you can put in a custom crafting recipe and you would get a custom recipe out. In this case, this is how you would possibly craft a sentry. You don't have to craft them, especially if you're in a multiplayer map. You'd probably just be given one. Um, and then you would give an output of sentry red. Um, and this would be like the spawn item for the sentry. Or when you select it, the sentry would move to your position. So let's say you want to summon in the sentry. You can activate this. You would open up the sentry red kit and it would give you a red sentry. Provided it was summoned in before the match started, which is how it would always be. But, um... Let's grab another one of those, and let's say that the blue team are moving up on the west side of your multiplayer map. Um, that's this way. Considering that's probably south. Yeah. 
Um, then you might want to put down your red sentry over here. All you have to do is grab another one of these kits and select it. Your sentry will move right to you. Um, and there it is. And it will also take your kit away. So you can kind of control the amount of times your team can move your sentry. Um, so that is kind of how that bit's done. Um, now I'm going to show you how the sentry actually operates and fires at you. So if I grab another one of those really quickly so I can move the sentry away from where the blue sentry will be spawned. I hate that feature sometimes. So I'm just going to move this sentry over here so it doesn't collide with the blue sentry. And I'm just going to run over here and spawn the blue one. Hopefully nothing went wrong. No, it didn't. And let me just pop blue sentry over here. And the cool thing about this is um, if you're on red team, you can also implement something into your map of where the red team could get their hands on a blue sentry kit so they can move around the other team's sentry, which would be pretty interesting for a mechanic. It's not really recommended. I've just noticed that's a bit off, but that's going to annoy you all day now. Um, but I thought that would be an interesting thing to implement, although if you just deny them access to those blocks, then they don't have to be able to move the sentries. But um, actually now I'm going to show you how they work. So if I go into slash game mode spectator, you'll be able to see how they work. So here we have these snow gnomes in the center here, and we have the arm stands that are being teleported to them. And what I'm going to do is I am going to come out of the spectator mode in case I suffocate this slime. Now, um, here I'm just setting my scoreboard to red um, or blue. I'm going to set mine to red for now. Um, this slime would usually be invisible and invincible, however this one isn't. Um, oh, I think it's invincible. Just because it has no AI. I don't know. Although it's invincible to the snowball attacks because... It can't be attacked by snowballs. Um, so for now it's not invincible or invisible. But usually it would. I've just kind of let you see it for demonstration purposes. So all this is doing is, um, if your scoreboard of either team is um, at least one, then it's going to teleport its slime to you. If it's red is one, or blue is one, then it's going to teleport this slime to you. The reason I've made it so you have to have red or blue, and it's not just teleporting slimes to you anywhere, because it doesn't really make a difference what team you're on, um, is because if you're in the lobby and you haven't selected your team yet, you don't want your sentries kind of shooting snowballs and then you'll be able to hear that snowball poof sound. Um, I don't know if you can actually get shot from behind blocks. It doesn't seem you can, but um, it'd be kind of annoying, let's say, if your sentries were just outside and you were showing them off around your spawn and they were just shooting snowballs all over the players. Um, so I thought I'd put that in there just in case you wanted to kind of show off these sentries around your spawn like they did in things like Missile Wars when they had the... The, the missiles kind of mounted on the walls so you could see them all and other kind of maps like that. Um, so I thought I'd put that in as a little thing. But um, how this works is the snow golems are automatically going to target the slime as an enemy. As you can see, I am on red team and I am stood in front of the red sentry and it is shooting me. But if I show you, if I go into game mode survival, this isn't doing any damage to me whatsoever. However, I, yeah, however if I step in front of the blue sentry, it's going to oh, shoot at me and it's going to do half half damage each time it hits. And I'm doing that by giving you the poison effect for one second or tick. As you can see, it's going to hurt me for one half of damage. Um, that hit me for two because it shot two snowballs at me. There we go, that hit me and did one half of damage. But if I stay in its radius for too long, let's say I don't really know where it is. Where, where am I being shot from? You know, it can shoot me a couple of times while I'm in its radius. But at this stage, it's not a very effective kind of means of attack and I don't want it to make it a too overpowered and I'll show you how I'm doing that in just a minute um, but that's just kind of how I'm getting the player to be targeted just by using slimes um, however only opposite opposing team sentries can actually target you so if I turn that off as you can see the slimes are going to stop following me um, and I'm going to go over here and show you just how they are damaging me when I'm only on the opposing team. I'd also like to give a shout out to Redux Redstone who is um, a friend of mine who kind of helped with this section. He gave me the general idea and I kind of um, implemented it into this um, concept. So um, I asked him on the Skype, hey I'm having a little bit of trouble with how this has worked. He gave me the idea, I kind of refined it to put it into this Redstone and this is what we came up with. So this is um, kind of a uh, a bit of a help from him, so thank you out there, Redux Redstone. Go check out his channel. Um, I'm gonna do a vlog sooner or later, so you can, so I can tell you about all of the Redstone YouTubers that I kind of know. Um, 
og vi er jo 